Hey dolls, Cece here with a life update. I have a lot of exciting news to share with you. First of all, I'm thrilled to announce that I am starting a book club and it gets even better. I'm also headed to Japan soon and packing starts right now. But before I dive into those details, I want to share something very special. If you are a, a true doll and you are listening to this the minute it drops, it is my mother's very first heavenly birthday. She had a unique way of connecting people on earth just as she does in heaven. And one person that she placed in my path twice is number one New York Times bestselling author Renee Watson. I was blessed to receive a preview copy of Renee's book, Skin and Bones, which follows 40-year-old Lena Baker as a confession on her wedding day upends her life. You heard me, dolls. This character is 40 years old, about to get married, and on the day of her wedding, it goes down. Dolls, from the first page, I could not put this book down. There's a quote from the book that really resonated with me. It says, you've got to carve out space for yourself. Define what beauty is for yourself and hold on to your definition when this world tries to tell you otherwise. And that's exactly what we're doing at my body care company, Coco by CC. Dolls, I am inspired. So Coco by CC is launching the True Beauty Book Club and our inaugural selection is Skin and Bones by Renee Watson. This summer book club is all about bringing together women and young girls to discuss, challenge, and redefine beauty standards through literature. Mondays at noon, we'll be having the conversation. You can find me here or on Instagram Live. We'll talk about the book and the True Beauty Book Club community that we're creating. Now for my next update, I am headed to Japan. My cousin Martin, who my Instagram dolls call Cousin Bay, major eye roll for me, he got me a ticket to Japan to visit him while he's deployed there in the Navy. So I'll be sharing all the details of my travel adventures on Instagram and YouTube, and at least one of the True Beauty Book Club sessions will be streamed from Japan. Without further ado, I would like to present to you the kickoff for our True Beauty Book Club in conversation with number one New York Times bestselling author, Renee Watson. Quick story time from my end. <laughs> Today is my mother's first heavenly birthday. My mother passed away unexpectedly and suddenly last fall, and I am still getting my footing. And one of the things that I am learning about my mother um, in her spiritual world now that I get to learn her and know her is that she is still very good at connecting me with who I need to be connected with at any given time. So my mother connected Renee and I when she was alive, and I'll let Renee kind of talk about that. But after my mother's passing, it was a cold winter night and I was trying to get into the Justin Timberlake concert. I had no tickets. I'm like, I need help. Like I need JC Chazé himself to come out, like something. And I'm kind of just like, I'd been in line, the line hadn't been moving. And I kind of take a little walk, cross the street, make a turn. And I hear someone say, Cece, and it's Renee. And my mother had just passed away. I had just moved back to Manhattan and I felt like I needed to be connected with you in person, mm -hmm. like in that moment. And I knew that in that moment, like, like you being in my life was like a thing, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it felt like this wasn't a call that I would have made. I don't think I would have reached out to you. And I'm sure eventually we would have crossed paths, but for it to be like at that time in my life, it just meant so much to me. So I give my mother points for that one too, because it felt like such kismet and like, yes. <laughs> I didn't have Justin Timberlake tickets, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I loved, I mean, seeing you, um, it was it was so random, right? I, we haven't talked in a while. And I remember, I, I've told you this before, and not that you needed to hear it from me, but your mother loved you with a fierce love. She was so proud of you. And uh, I got to know you through your mom first. Like I was just following your blog and knew about your work. A fierce love for you. And she was so proud of you. Mm. Um, and my first time getting to know you really was 
talking about you and bragging on you. And she said, I just, you two need to meet each other. And when she kept talking about you and saying what you were doing, I was like, wait a minute, I know, I don't know her, but I know who she is, I follow her. And so I love that she brought us together back then. So I appreciate you sharing this day with me, um, honoring her birthday and also honoring the book. Uh, it means a lot to me. As you know, I've lost my mother and it's just a pain you never, it never stops hurting. Um, but as we know, it hurts because we were so deeply loved. And that is such a gift to know that these women loved us in such a, a big, deep way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I am with you in the grief and, and in the living, um, yes. all of it. Yes, yes, I receive that. I receive that. I'm gonna take a moment. I saw a comment come through and I think it was directly to you. So I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure someone said, they said, Renee, you came to visit my classroom a few years ago and it was so impactful for me and the kids. Thank you for oh, all you do. Thank that you. That was from Sarah Great. McPherson. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for joining us today. So if anything that we're talking about inspires you to support the mission of the True Beauty Book Club and become a founding member, um, you can get the True Beauty Book Club kit if you want to just follow along, get the book from the library. All of these conversations are going to happen on Instagram Live. So this is something that you can do through the summer with us. This is something you can do audiobook, library book, or if you want to support what we're doing, you can invest in the True Beauty Book Club kit. Um, and I'll tell you more about that later, but the link is in the comments. So I had some questions for Renee. Okay. And then I thought we would have you read uh, from the from the book. Sure. How does that sound? Okay, Perfect. Great, 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 great. I am. So my first question is, why this book mm. and why now? Why this book? I, so most people know me for the books I write for young readers. Um, and in those books, I center black girls, I center big girls. I've been having conversations with teenagers for a decade or more about loving yourself and um, living up to, to your highest self. <laughs> How can you show up and be your best self in the world? Uh, and so I just wanted to have that conversation with the mothers, aunties, teachers, mentors, big sisters that are nurturing and loving our young people. It just felt like it's a, it's a very similar conversation that I've been having, but I've wanted to have it with adults and intergenerational too. I'm just ready to talk um, about some things that I feel like, well, that may not be for a middle grade novel, yes. <laughs> but I wanted yes. to still talk about those issues. And who are single in their forties, big women who are living their lives and happy and joyful and full, um, fashionable you know like i just wanted to make sure that i'm putting a wide range of stories out into the world that reflect the incredible strong brilliant women that i know and so i know women like lena and aspen and kendra the three main characters i know honey lena's mother um and i just want to continue to put out work that represents the world that we're living in um why also why is because I wanted us to be the, our own lead and our own heroes. So there's three plus size women. They're all different sizes, but they're all plus size and they're all dark skinned black women. And so there is no way if, if you have these three women as the main characters, there's no way to, for one of them to be the, the sidekick, fat, funny, loud friend or the, you know, the wise, all-knowing one that sometimes big women get those kind of roles. So it just, it made it possible to tell a good story and not, and to kind of stay away from the stereotypes and cliches that when there's one big character, that character becomes a cliche or the representative for all big people. And so that was the other, I was very intentional about making sure they were all gonna be big <laughs> um and and play on that throughout the throughout the novel mm -hmm. so if you're just joining us we are talking about skin and bones with number one new york times best-selling author renee watson um we are 
in conversation with her through the summer about this book. So you have time to join this conversation no matter when you're listening to this, whether it's um, now live or later on on some of my other platforms like YouTube. So what I want to hear a little bit more about is the aesthetics of it because mm. one of my favorite parts in the book as a plus size woman as a curvy girl as someone who has been anywhere from a size 28 to a size 18 teetering on 16 if i really want to be real with myself then i understand what it's like to not only interact as a big girl to a world that is not big but also interacting big girl to big girl mm -hmm. right i feel like that's a whole other dynamic that doesn't often get explored and there's a part in the book where i think it might have been the only chapter and i wish i had i wish i had you see all my notes i wish i had <laughs> organized my notes i didn't know you were going to bring this up and jog my memory but basically where it's like lena aspen and then um and it's like big yes bigger yeah. biggest, right and like that hierarchy amongst women sure but once everybody's plus size, it it's almost like once everybody's black, then colorism pops in, right? Once everybody's plus size, then body yep. shape, you know, suddenly like yep. who's the, so tell me, what do you see? Like when you're, when you're, do you do what I'm trying to ask you? Yeah, well, I mean, it just, I, it's realistic fiction. So I had to keep it real. And I know that that is a thing in our community. Um, and I also know, which is just human nature is that we compare groups and friends and people who are similar right so even the onlookers are looking at these three friends and they're gonna say oh lena's the biggest one she's the conservative one this one is the you know mm -hmm. the wild one the loud one that, that when you're in a group of friends or you all belong to a church or mm -hmm. <laughs> any kind of group mm -hmm. you just get labeled and um and lena is also thinking about what do these labels actually mean uh -huh. And is she gonna own those labels? Um, and does it does it matter that she's the biggest of uh, the three? Huh? Um, it's not so much that she is the biggest; it's how she's treated because she's the biggest. Uh -huh. You know. So uh -huh. yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted to play around with that and also think about what does it mean to be in complicated relationships with our friends. Mm -hmm. Um, they are sisters in a way. They love each other. They've known each other their whole lives. Mm -hmm. um, and still, there's a little bit of jealousy. There's some competition. Mm -hmm. There's some misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I think, how it is <laughs> with people you love. They yeah. can also hurt you. And so, and not intend to, mm -hmm. right? So she's mm -hmm. just trying to figure out um, this thing we call love and all of its layers and how complicated it is to love your friends and your family and these people who are up close and all in your business. They know yeah. you yeah. sometimes better than you know yourself. Yeah. Um, and they also, because of that deep love, they can also hurt you the deepest. Mm -hmm. And so I think I was trying to show what that, what that feels and looks like um, for a person who is constantly being compared to a beauty standard that is unrealistic and also being compared with in this, what is a safe space for her, but still having some, rubbing up against some of those beauty standards that outside of the circle. So you would think it only happens outside of the circle, but some of it has crept into their circle too. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. So tell me about, well, two things. I, I want you to talk more about beauty standards mm -hmm. because to me, that is so much of what bubbled up in the book. But I also want to say for me, something, the reason I knew this was the book I wanted to launch my book club with is because I have learned over the years that my community of dolls watches my content with their daughters. Like there mm -hmm. is an intergenerational conversation around beauty happening just by nature of watching my content. When my little niece is like, oh, I saw a red, truck and i thought of you auntie and your ford you know like mm -hmm. she thinks like mm -hmm. she's associating now a certain type of thing with social media and whatever which is kind of the point but this book being so intentionally like the little girl is as much Aaliyah is as much a character and her interaction and experience with beauty is such an important part of the story right so when you talk about beauty standards amongst friends 
how do you have that conversation with the littles that who are mm -hmm. listening whether we want to yes. do it or not oh i love that question and that is so that's the heart of the novel right is all about lena having these grown conversations and saying things in front of her daughter that she doesn't quite realize her daughter's picking up on um and so yeah i'm constantly thinking about how do i talk about myself in front of the young girls i'm mentoring or my niece my goddaughter um what are what are the you know the self-deprecating things we say and maybe it is a joke but also i feel like there's some truth to when we're even picking on our own selves or when we're commenting on somebody else's body or their clothes mm -hmm. or their hair mm -hmm. um so i i think that it's more important to think about the smaller moments and not the kind of lectures and speeches we give to young people it's so easy to know what to say um in a card or when we have the time to sit down and really talk to them and I'm going to pour into this young person a day, da, 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 right? You say all the right <laughs> things then. But when you're just in the car and somebody walks past you and you go, hmm, I don't know why she wearing that because that is when they're really learning. They're not maybe so much listening to what we're saying in those big, extravagant, big moments. I, when I think about the lessons I learned about beauty and self-love and what was appropriate and what wasn't, it was all the little side comments that the women would be making around me at the dinner table, uh, you know, when we were at a family gathering. Oh, girl, she done picked up a lot of weight. And it's the tone that they said it in where you like, oh, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think we're, we are teaching our girls how to love themselves by what we do, not what we say. And I think the book is trying to push us, the adults, to be more mindful of, of what we're saying and doing in front of our young people and to push ourselves to actually be who we want them to be, right? I want my, my nieces and my goddaughter to be kind to, the, to, to her. I want her to be kind. I want her to love herself. I want her to uh, have affirmations that she's saying in the morning to herself. But am I doing that? Like, I, you know, am I judging myself? Do I show myself grace? Like, I, I want us to start doing the thing we keep talking about. Um, and that's hard. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that's the journey that the character Lena is on. And it's one I've been on for a while, too. I agree. I agree. I think there's so much alignment with the mission of this book and, like, the mission of Coco by Cece. Like, for me, body care as an extension of body positivity. How, mm -hmm. how many little kids can emulate their mom's routine, whatever that is, yes. or whatever it is not, right? So what are we teaching in the in-between? Like the thing you do every day is gonna stick to your point way more than the heart to heart, you know, after school special. <laughs> <laughs> we need that too, right? I think it's having a balance of like, I, I learned by, what my mother showed me in her actions and I appreciate that I do have on record the cards and the letters that she wrote me um I need both of those things and so and I, I needed her to also sometimes apologize or tell me she didn't know like she she was good at um admitting that she did not know all the answers and I think that is so hard I I am not a mother I am, I've been a teacher, I've, I'm an aunt, I'm all these other roles in a young person's life where they're coming to you and you want to be the one to solve it and fix it or know what to say. And sometimes we just don't. And mm -hmm. that that is okay too, to sit in that space of like, I'm growing, I'm unlearning some damaging messages that I grew up believing about myself. Um, we're in this together. And I, I don't know that enough of us are willing to admit that to young people. But I think that it's important that they know that it's a journey. Yes. I, at every age, I'm, I, I hope I'm gonna keep growing and learning and evolving. Yes. And that means um, each year I love myself more mm. and I treat myself better than I did the last year. I rest more, uh, you know, I make time for my friends more. Mm -hmm. And that's something I have had to learn how to do mm -hmm. over my life. And and 
I think if we approach it that way with our young people, I don't know. I feel like that's maybe a healthier way than just like, it's not a one and done conversation. <laughs> I think I it is that. a process for the rest of our lives, probably. I feel that. Uh, Devin San Sanford said, normalize apologizing and learning from children. Amen. It's, <laughs> it's funny in, in our family, well, between my mother and I, I don't know. I think I'll, I would call it like arm gate. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> What do you mean by that? It was a family reunion in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> it was a family reunion in Portland, Oregon. And in my family, I'm the oldest and I was the biggest and my middle sister, you know, after then the baby. So that kind of thing. So I'm the biggest of the sisters and my, my middle sister and I both had strapless dresses we wanted to wear. And I'm like, in college like i'm definitely like an undergrad so i have been dressing myself <laughs> and away from home right but we're here we're all together in the hotel my 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 sibling strapless dress approved my mother insisted that i put on a shrug and i'm like mm -hmm. why like you just she was what and it was mm -hmm. like well like you're in this category therefore blah 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 and with my body positivity work and all the public stuff I do, my mother, like some of my last text messages from my mom are her thanking me for mm -hmm. the body positive mindset, that switch. And she came back to me out of the blue one time and was like, you know, I'm so sorry I did that to you about your arms at one family reunion. I'm like, oh yeah, like that was messed up and thanks. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. I see people laughing yeah. in the comments, but so I feel like that's, kind of what you're talking about exactly. a little bit exactly exactly that dance of i'm gonna mess up and is how quickly do i realize it and 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 apologize and then try to do better <laughs> right <laughs> uh, we, we can't just keep apologizing and then just stay in the foolishness we gotta like mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. and so yeah I, I i love that your mother was like wait a minute i i can even go back years right it doesn't i think sometimes we're like well that happened so long ago I'm not gonna bring it up. We've moved on. I'm like, no, it's worth revisiting if you've hurt someone. <laughs> and if they're okay, great. But it's just to acknowledge. Like, I remember I said this or I did this, and I just wanna let you know I'm trying to be better now, or I shouldn't have done that. I think that goes a long way, especially with a child or with someone who you have the you have the power. You're the person in the relationship that, you know, it's the mentor, the nurturer, the teacher, teachers also, for my educators who have joined us today, even thinking about in the classroom when to admit, you know what, I don't know the answer to this, or we're going to learn this thing together, or I'm just as frustrated as y'all are, but this is, you know, I think the more we can be honest um, with young people, the better we all are for that. Yeah. So speaking of young people, I would love for you to introduce us to Aaliyah and mm -hmm. maybe do a little reading. Sure. Um, so in this, this is actually, we won't meet Aaliyah so much, but her mother is writing a letter to her, speaking of letters and what we say <laughs> to our young people. So I, I say this often when I read this part, I feel like we arrive into this world whole right? We, we don't know anything about who's beautiful, who's not, what makes a, a neighborhood um, a good neighborhood or not. Like if you come from that part of town, then you're not worth, we don't know any of that as babies. And a lot of us are born into loving, nurturing families and communities who love on us and nurture us. But then we go out into the world and that is when we realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm staying I don't think I'm as beautiful as my mama does or the texture of my hair it's very different than the girls I'm going to school with what does this mean you know that we start to learn um and and unlearn the things that we came into this world knowing about ourselves and so Aaliyah is very much in that that way of like her her family adores her and they're always telling her that she's brilliant and she can be anything but then she goes to school and she's, you know, teased by a classmate and a teacher um, misunderstands her zeal for learning, for being 
bossy and disrespectful and disruptive. So she's coming into contact with the real world and having to ask her mother, how do I remain whole in a world that wants to break me? I feel like I'm when I'm with you, I feel loved and seen and beautiful and I go out into the world and they chip away at my soul. So uh, Lena, her mother, writes this letter and in the moment she doesn't give it to Aaliyah, but this is some advice that she knows Aaliyah will need one day. What I tell Aaliyah, dear Aaliyah, believe the women who are still able to laugh even after loss and famine and drought and heartbreak. Trust the ones who know how to nurse a wound, who know something about the time it takes for hurting to heal. Believe me when I say, you have to hold on tight to yourself. Keep your mind anchored to what you know to be true. The anchor is me, is honey, is Aunt Aretha, is every black woman who came before you and survived they are holding you too. Their know-how, they're not gonna let nobody turn us around, their loudness, their pride. Believe those voices above all other voices. Believe that it's not your responsibility to make anyone see your worth. You just be every bit of brilliance and beauty you are. Just because they don't believe you don't mean it's not true. So that is what Aaliyah, what Lena says to her daughter, Aaliyah. When I, when I tried to explain what makes me so passionate about this book, the way I say it like, like in shorthand is like, there's, there's a, a little girl who is told by, by her mother she's beautiful and then when she doesn't quite believe it and challenges it back, it's like, well, well, you're telling me I'm beautiful. I look like you and you're trying to change yourself. Mm -hmm. So what's up? <laughs> yeah, the mixed messages, right? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm excited. Keep going. <laughs> Say more. I, I saw no, no, go ahead. I'm excited to have this discussion. I think, I think it's it's important. I think you know. I think it, it's helpful, and I think that it is intergenerational. Like it just has to be because mm -hmm. all the toxic stuff was too, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> and our young people are listening and watching, and they know. We keep trying to protect them from things or saying, well, that's not a conversation for them to have now or yet. But they know a lot more than we give them credit for knowing, just like we knew a lot than, you know, maybe our parents thought that we knew or wanted us to know. So, yeah, I'm constantly trying to ask myself to be who I needed adults to be for me when I was a teenager mm -hmm. um, and to show up for them. And I, did, I had a, a lot of amazing adults in my life, thankfully. Um, but there were some that, I, that could have, they, they needed to do better. <laughs> and so I just, I want to be the adult um, that is, that a child has a good memory of and that is not one day telling the story about Oh my goodness, when Renee was in my life. Oh, you know, I, I don't want to be that story. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly trying to rise to be my best self so that I can, um, yeah, be who I need them, who they need me to be, who I needed. I'm thinking of all of that. Um, and just trying to be who my mama raised me to be too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I don't want to hold you too long. I mean, I, we didn't even talk about a time for this, how long we were going to go. <laughs> so because this is just a kickoff, I think I will, um, I feel like the best thing to do is going to be to let this recording stay up. I saw some people saying that they couldn't stay all the way for the live and that they wanted to come back and finish. So I think we can do that. I think it'll be a good way for everyone to get to know you and me and what we're up to. Um, I let's see, we'll be doing mini conversations about the book on Mondays at noon across the board through the summer. 
and then I know you'll you'll pop in with us once a month in between. I think that's what we're gonna do. So um, I think being on live and letting people walk through the book slowly, then people will be ready for you with questions. Hopefully, the next time we're all together. Again, yes, I'm excited. <laughs> If you're interested in joining the True Beauty Book Club, you can join for free. Go to your local library, pick up the book, and follow along here on social. If you want to invest in the mission and help us to continue to spread this message far and wide, you can go to CocoaByCC.com and order a True Beauty Book Club kit. You will get a hardcover version of Skin and Bones by Renee Watson. You will get, oh, these are hot off the press. You will get three Coco by CC minis. These literally just came from the lab. Mm -hmm. So you'll get mm -hmm. a mini doll butter. You'll get a mini self-love scrub. And you'll get a mini of our brand new beautiful body oil mist. A tiny little mist. It's so cute. So we have this in mind for all of your summer, summer travels between this, the book, and a cute little tote that says True Beauty. By the time we all get back together again, I'll have all those in person, but they are literally hot off the presses right now. So that is the True Beauty Book Club kit featuring Skin and Bones by Renee Watson. I'm excited for the summer. Me too. Fun. Me too. Thanks for choosing my book for your first book of the book club. And I'm very excited to, to be in conversation with anyone who's participating um, and answer questions and talk about these characters. Perfect. It's going to be fun. I will see you soon. Enjoy yes, your I'll day. see you soon. Alrighty. Bye. Bye.